Suppose we want to make the target compound. Well, you know, the very first thing we're supposed to do is notice the functional groups that we need to make. There's only one. We can circle it. This is a primary alcohol. So we will be asking ourselves, what ways do we know to make primary alcohols? Step two is count the number of carbons. How big is this molecule? Well, it is five carbon atoms big. And then step three is to notice the pool of available starting materials. What compounds can we start from? And we're talking here, we can start with alkanes. They can have at most six carbons. This is convenient. We don't need to make any carbon-carbon bonds because we could start with an alkane that has five carbons. We could start with an alkane that has six carbons if we really wanted to. So in our first three steps, noticing the functional groups, seeing how big the target is, and comparing it to the molecules that we have to start with. We already see that we can rule out the need to make carbon-carbon bonds, and we need to think of ways to make primary alcohols. So as you've cataloged your chemistry as ways to make functional groups, what comes to mind for primary alcohols? Well, let's take a look. As we think about this, we realize that this molecule could come from two different possibilities. It could come from this primary bromide, or it could come from this alkene. Both could give this target molecule in a single step. In this case, this would be an SN2 reaction, replacing the primary bromide with hydroxide. And in this case, it would be anti-Markovnikov addition of water to an alkene. We know how to do both of those things. And we also notice that this primary bromide that we wrote down here could come from the alkene we wrote down, so we can do this. Using the bromide would simply add an extra step to our synthesis. So anyway, we've planned our last step. We'll make the primary alcohol from an alkene, or perhaps from a primary bromide. And now we need to plan how to make this alkene. Well, we know that alkenes can be made by E2 elimination of bromine. And we know that the bromine could be on this carbon or that one. Well, we don't know how to make this selectively, but we do know how to make tertiary bromide selectively from alkanes, as it turns out. So it's pretty good bet that this will be a great precursor for our alkene. And it simply remains to put down that the tertiary bromide we want could come from this alkane by selective halogenation at a tertiary site. So there you have it. In the retrosynthetic planning sense, we figured out how we can make this molecule, and we've decided that the starting material would be isopentane. What remains to do is write out the synthesis from front to back, putting in the reagents. So starting with isopentane, we would treat with, treat with bromine and light, make this tertiary bromide selectively, use a bulky base so that the elimination would make the terminal alkene, not the more substituted one, and then use borane followed by the oxidizing agent to do anti-Markovnikov addition of water to the double bond to make our primary alcohol. And there you have it. First we plant it in reverse order, and then we laid out the actual synthesis itself, including the reagents we'd need. And those tasks, taken systematically, are pretty manageable.